question. Who knows, uh, who of you knows Zalando? Okay, that's only a few. Uh, next question, uh, the people who know Zalando, how much engineers do you think work at Zalando? So maybe raise your hands. Uh, we have around 50 and 100 engineers. No one? Okay, a few. Then uh, between 100 and uh, 300. Okay. <laughs> and uh, between uh, 500 and 800. Okay, great. Yeah, so um, basically for the people who, doesn't know, uh, who don't know Zalando, uh, Zalando is actually the biggest fashion company in Europe and uh, we are also the uh, fastest growing fashion company in Europe. Um, this is our website, so um, basically most people uh, actually know us from the uh, advertisement with the screaming people. Um, that, that was how we started and now we are, um, yeah, we are the perfect combination actually um, between fashion and uh, technology. So our uh, tech headquarter is in Berlin and we also have uh, offices in Dublin, Helsinki, Dortmund, uh, Mönchengladbach and Erfurt. And we have more than 800 tech uh, people working in the technology department now. And we want to hire a lot of more uh, engineers within the next years. So, uh, and what technologies do you use at Zalando? Well, these are some of them, but in the future I think we can say everything because at Zalando, we believe that every team knows their job best and every team is doing, knows their product best and every team can choose the best technologies for their job. Uh, we have lots of Java engineers, but we also have Python, Scala. Uh, we use Docker for our deployments on AWS. Uh, we also have some people that are very passionate about Node.js, so if you like Node.js, we also have a place for you. We use, um, Cassandra, Postgres, uh, you name it. So, we uh, are, our foundation principles are, and what you, we want to do is be API first. So, when we do a new project, we build first API and then we think about implementation. This way, we are not stuck with the implementation and uh, we don't have to worry about technologies that uh, consumers of, a uh, of an API are using and we can shield ourselves from it. We use REST, we use software as a service and we want to do it more. Uh, we are migrating to cloud, to AWS, and we are currently migrating from our monolithic structure to microservices because we believe that's the way to do, to, to do if you want to be reliable, if you want to be scalable, and if you want to give teams autonomy and freedom to make their own choices. Yeah, so basically uh, you already mentioned some uh, things we want to focus on now. Um, so actually we implemented radical agility in the whole technology department in the beginning of the year um, to really focus on trusting our people and their um, abilities and we want to um, Give the give our teams um, the the way like an the an autonomy so that they can really be creative and uh, that people that also projects get um, get uh, done quick more quickly. Um, we will implement a tool of mastery for our in, um, employees in technology so that they can develop their skills and also exchange um, their knowledge. And we also try to really. Um, to develop our leaders so that they can um, manage their teams better. Um, what is really amazing about us, um, so we um, have tech talks every week where people really talk about their projects so everyone knows what is going on. We have two hack weeks a year where actually people coming together, build new ideas, and now we also have a um, innovation lab, which is amazing because those ideas are not just um, ending after this week, but we can implement them in the daily work. And uh, from you, uh, those of you who are like fashion addicted like me, we also have 40% discount if you're working at Zalando. And yeah, if you want to uh, learn more about us, um, please visit our tech blog. Um, we are also here till, um, till Thursday actually. There's gonna be a colleague from Dublin tomorrow, so just come over and ask all the questions you want to um, know.
Paris. Okay, can you hear me if I stand this far away from the mic? Is that okay? Thumbs up in the back? Thank you very much. So, uh, we, th that was a very great presentation by Salando. Good job. We have no slides. Nothing, nothing of the sort. In fact, we didn't know we were going to do this until a few hours ago. Ulysses and I are not from HR. We are both uh, engineers. So we're here to tell you a little bit about Data Robot. A lot of you have probably seen our, uh, our display out there, and some of our stuff is stuck in Madrid. So. Uh, Come back tomorrow, and we might have some T-shirts. We're, we're, we're getting there. Um, so I guess uh, we can start by saying what Data Robot is and what we do. Um, that would probably be a good start. So uh, we're building a tool for predictive modeling. Uh, so people in the world have data, and they want to use this data to make predictions. Like an insurance company want to predict if you're going to get into a car accident, or if one of your credit card, or not, a, not an insurance company, a, uh, a credit card company wants to know if one of your transactions is fraudulent. The way that they do this is they look at lots of old data and build a model. And then we are building that tool for them to build that model much more quickly. Um, so there are applications for Data Robot in insurance and in banks and in pharmaceuticals and in telecoms and in sports analytics all over the place. I'm obviously a little biased, but I think everyone should be able to use Data Robot. It's good. Um, so Ulysses, why don't you tell us or uh, tell these fine people what sort of uh, technology we use? Yeah, sure. So we use Python, of course. Um, also, some uh, NoSQL databases, uh, Redis, uh, Mongo. We use uh, Docker for deployment. As a matter of fact, we use Docker for uh, multiple things uh, distributed testing, deployment, and also for some uh, prototyping. Um, as far as the Python libraries, well, we are all about machine learning. So there are multiple libraries out there that we use, like uh, Pandas, NumPy. Um, Cycler, yeah. So um, if any of this sounds familiar, we want to talk to you, even if you don't know what we're talking about, but you're excited about it, we still want to talk to you. That's pretty much how I actually I, I, uh, joined Data Robot. I was very curious about the stack. Didn't have much experience in it, but um, it's pretty much, I guess, what um, got my, my interest. So anyway. Um, Python backend engineers, uh, full stack engineers, uh, DevOps. There's a lot of uh, automation that we're building uh, around our infrastructure. Um, you know, we're all, all about automated testing, of course, uh, continuous deployment. So there's a lot of work to, to, to do around the, the infrastructure side. Yep. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we use Python for our entire stack except for the front end. That's all JavaScript. Um, but because the data science and the web frameworks, they're all able to do in Python. We're one big happy Python family. Um, but specifically, some things that we, uh, we like, different packages and things we do. Um, we're fans of Python 3. Not all of our stack is in Python 3, but we're moving that direction. So if you're a fan of Python 3, come talk to us. Uh, we really like machine learning, obviously, um, but we're big on automated testing. So if that excites you, that's we'd like to talk to you. Um, continuous deployment. Um, Letting, letting measuring and monitoring determine our decisions and our engineering, um, uh, you know, I guess decisions, and uh, also distributed computing. So if any of those things sound interesting to you, we'd love to talk to you. Um, the kind of problems that we think about and that we want to solve in the near term are um, training our models on, on larger and larger data sets, scaling out to terabytes and petabytes of data. Um, we'd like to move more towards a microservices-oriented um, architecture, so if you've ever done that or you think that sounds cool, um, that's just one of the things that we're thinking about. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm sorry. I let it go to sleep. Um, actually, that maybe was good timing. Because yeah. that's all we have to say. Those are the kinds of things we'd like to work on. <laughs> Come talk to us. <laughs>
Switch that. This is Clark. He's a data scientist. <laughs> His job is to build accurate predictive models. <laughs> okay. 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 If we were going to do something, we want. Not yet. Okay. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so. I'm here today to talk about Fangil. Um, so who are we? What do we do? Fangil started with five people in Edinburgh in 2009. Um, today we are the market leaders in one day fantasy sports in North America, 300 strong across Edinburgh, Glasgow, Orlando, New York, and soon to be LA. Now our technology base is in Edinburgh and Glasgow, and that is pretty much why we're here today. We are continuing to grow. So we are looking for developers right across um, the stack, particularly, obviously, Python. Um, so we couldn't bring our office to you to show you how fantastic it was, and we couldn't bring everybody from Fangil to show you how fantastic they are. So instead, I thought I would show you this, and now I need to know how to press, there we go. So any questions, please come and see myself and Julie at our stand. Hope to see you there soon. To do it big. That's why we focused on the US and that's why we focused on fantasy sports. We launched Fangil in 2009 uh, with five co-founders. The reason we launched was we saw it was a big market, but we felt the existing products weren't great and we could do it a lot better. Fangil is a fantasy sports game. It takes the traditional concept of playing fantasy sports over an entire season and shortens it into one day. We saw a real opportunity because there was a lack of innovation in the fantasy sports industry. I remember our first paying customer, we managed to get $5 from them and, and we pinned the notice up on the wall, this was so exciting. Um, I remember discussing with the CEO about how we can bring more players into the game and I remember him saying to me, we just need three paying players each day and we'll be okay. And now, you know, we're getting 10,000 a day. So this year we'll pay out over $500 million in prizes. Next year we'll pay out over a billion dollars in prizes. There's over 40 million fantasy sports players in North America and over 100 million sports fans. We've got slightly over a million paying players. So we've only just scratched the surface of this market. We've actually created this whole new category. And from a business perspective, that's very exciting. It's funny, more and more people in the US have heard of Fangio but in the UK, we're still relatively unknown. Nobody realizes we're building a billion dollar business on their doorstep. We serve over a million users across web, mobile, and tablet. At peak times, they are making up to 200 entries and edits per second. That's the equivalent of selling out Wembley Stadium every eight minutes. The tech that we're using at Fangio is exciting because we're solving problems and doing things that no one has ever done before. We are looking to double our headcount by the end of 2015 from 120 staff to 250 and that's across our headquarters in New York and our offices in the UK. It's about the people that we get to work with. Um, we get to work not only with other developers and designers and so on, but also with, um, because of the New York office, we get to meet people that we wouldn't normally get to meet. We're not only building a company, we're building a team. We're moving forward together towards success. It takes a lot of people to make a winning team and everyone's contribution is important. So we've strived really hard to build almost like a Silicon Valley type culture here in the UK. So it sounds a bit cliched, but it really is work hard, play hard. Every week there are new faces in the office. It's amazing to see how quickly the team's growing. You're going to get interesting and difficult challenges here on a product that serves millions of users on various platforms. You know, if you want to work for one of the fastest growing web companies in the UK, then take a look at our careers page today.
So yes, hopefully I will see you soon over at our stand. Thanks now. I've got like a little bit that is like that. Is it for the other side? No, just go like that. It's coming up. Okay. Um, welcome to the recruiting session. My name is Christine Doig. I'm a data scientist at Continuum Analytics, and Fabio here also works at Continuum Analytics. He's a software developer working on Bokeh. I'm working on Blaze. I don't know if you've seen any of us in our um, different um, talks that we've had uh, at EuroPython. We also have a booth, so if after this session you want to talk, come talk to us, um, feel welcome to come. So uh, how many people here have uh, heard of Continuum Analytics? Uh, how many people um, have heard about Anaconda? Okay, so there's a few. Not everyone. I've I've had a lot of people talking um, during the, the the conference who don't know about Anaconda. Anaconda is a, a free Python distribution um, with a lot of packages for scientific data science and um, analytics uh, that's already uh, compiled that you can download. Um, and it solves a lot of problems that people have with installing Python in Windows and also um, in some of the, the libraries that have C or Python, um, C or, or Fortran bindings. Um, at Continuum, we have a, a product called Anaconda Server that's built on top of the Anaconda free uh, distribution, and it allows large corporations to manage their package infrastructure um, and have everyone uh, download and install uh, internal, uh, that internal uh, binary packages. Um, besides that, we also do consulting and training uh, in both Python, um, Python and also finance applications. Um, here's okay. That's our website, continuum.io. Um, we also have support a lot of the open source Python scientific and data science libraries. Um, and we are actively recruiting uh, we are growing a lot. Uh, last year when I joined, uh, we were about 50 uh, employees. Right now we're around, around 130 and um, joining every day. Um, this is our office in downtown Austin. Um, we have more or less around 60 people there. Um, another office in New York with around 15, 20. And then most, a lot of other people are remote, working in both in other cities in the US but not also in Argentina, Colombia, Poland, UK, France, Spain. Right now we're... Um, yeah, we have a, in Italian okay. an office with one employee. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Fabio, I forgot about you. <laughs> um, so we're hiring Python developers, uh, people that can do uh, finance, that are experts in finance too. We have a lot of our customers are hedge funds and, and banks, um, especially in New York. Um, web app developers, um, and C++. Uh, and, and also, in general, anyone who really loves open source and Python. 
Um, so we're everywhere, we're employing people all around the world, as I said, and you can find all the open uh, careers at the website continuum.io um, slash careers, uh, or stop by our, our booth. We're gonna be here all week. Yeah, I don't have much to add, uh, just that, um, as Christina said, uh, Christina said we, we are really care about open source community. We have a great, um, uh, we, we're a great company um, environment, uh, a great, um, uh, it's great to work with really smart people that share the same passion for community, open source and everything. So if you are interested, come reach us and let's talk. Thank you. So hi everyone, we are Scraping Hub, as you might have noticed. Um, we, sorry, uh, we extract data from the web, we help people collect data. We're a fully remote company, uh, we started remotely, uh, it's part of our DNA, it's part of our culture. Uh, the company started five years ago and we have doubled each year, uh, more than doubled each year. We are now 100 members uh, spread all around the world, as you can see. Uh, we have a very generous benefits package. We offer vacations, hardware allowance, online services allowance. We also offer, oh. <laughs> that's better. We also offer the opportunity to work on open source projects. Um, we have more than 10 open source projects um, and we have many challenges. We have scraped 11 million items last year, and there is a very big infrastructure behind that. So if you like challenges, you are invited to apply for a show at Scraping Hub, and please visit us at our booth if you want to continue talking. Thank you.
this week. I'm in the open source program office. Uh, we are building a worldwide, world-class cloud, and we do speak Python, Penguin, and Whale, among other things. So if you are interested in, in being part of that team, whether it be Python or OpenStack, uh, we're hiring many developers uh, to participate in those teams. If you're interested in other projects like Cloud Foundry or Hadoop or R, we also have teams for that. So if you go to hp.com slash jobs, uh, you can do a search. When I did a search earlier this week for uh, careers in Python, there were currently over 300 jobs. So wherever you are in the world, uh, whatever technology you'd like, HP's a company that will, will provide you the opportunity to grow in open source as well as in technology. So come stop by our booth or ask me any questions at any point this week. So hi everybody, I'm Tyler um, with Red Hat. This is our fourth Euro Python and we're very happy to be here. It's always been probably, I would say, our best recruiting event globally, year after year. Um, the question that I always get year after year is how can I get a hat? And everyone asks it no matter what event we go to and the answer to that is, is really quite simple. Uh, we give a hat to every new employee on their new hire orientation. So, if you really, really, really want a fedora, then you need to come talk to us at our booth, and we can tell you all about the opportunities that we have. Uh, this tells you a little bit about what Red Hat does. Most of you probably know Red Hat for bringing Linux to the mainstream, but we also have solutions in middleware. It's mostly J it's JBoss, it's mostly Java. Uh, virtualization, we have a uh, management suite that is all written in Python. Cloud, which is OpenStack, OpenShift, so infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, heavy Python. Um, there are large pieces of the operating system like Anaconda Installer that is completely Python. And we also have a storage division. So we're looking for software engineers, test engineers, DevOps, uh, even some evangelists uh, with Python skills. And why Red Hat? I think the number one reason to choose Red Hat is the commitment to open source. Every product that we put out is completely open source. Um, if we acquire a company and it's proprietary, the first thing we do is take it open source. Um, we're consistently rated as four, one of Forbes' top employers for software engineering. We're also very likely to hire you remotely if that's something you'd like to do. In Europe, our largest engineering office is in the Czech Republic in Brno, where I actually uh, relocated four years ago. Um, and it's fantastic. We have 800 engineers there working on all of Red Hat's products. So we can bring you there or we can hire you most likely where you are. And the company's doing extremely well. We've had 53 consecutive quarters of revenue growth. So it's a good time to join Red Hat. So how to apply? Stop by the booth. Come talk to us. Um, we've got a lot of engineers here this week that would be happy to answer any technical questions you have or tell you about the projects that they're working on. Uh, you can talk to Yuri Folta, who's down here in the front with the camera, or myself. We're happy to talk to you. Um, you can check our career site. One thing I will tell you is if you see a job you like, don't worry about where the location is listed. If it's listed in the U.S., but you want to work from here, apply for it. Ping me, ping Yuri. A lot of times we move the job where the talent is. And you can reach out to us on Twitter. So that is it. So hopefully we'll see you at New Hire Orientation, and we'll put a hat on your head.
Yep. Okay. Um, so, hi everyone. Um, I'm Stefan Wiener. Uh, you may know me as the core developer of Cython, the Cython compiler, and maybe also the LXML XML framework. Uh, so, a couple of years ago, I uh, decided to start working at Scooby. Um, and so, Scooby is uh, the, the leading German uh, provider for an ebook subscription service. So, you can think of it as uh, Spotify for ebooks. And as I said, we are the market leader and now. Uh, so that came, we, we've gone online uh, in 2012 and we've basically, you know, wrapped up the market uh, in the last few years. Uh, so we have the largest catalog um, with 130,000 books uh, in total, which means that you can uh, sign up with our service, uh, pay 10 euros, 10 euros a month, and then read as much as you can possibly think of. Um, so I have all sorts of, uh, of we have a huge um, uh, catalog with lots of content. I see a couple of books here. Uh, most of it is, as we're German-based, is in German, but we have a large international catalog and we're constantly growing it. We're working together with publishers. Uh, uh, we have uh, pretty much all German publishers on board uh, by now and we're uh, constantly increasing the, the amount of, of publishers that we get on board. So it's like, we're not doing self-publishing, self what I'm saying here is like real publishers titles, meaning uh, books you actually want to read. Um, so, uh, so what do we do at Scooby? Uh, basically, pretty much our, our um, well, let's say, most of our infrastructure uh, that we've developed for uh, all the way from getting books in from the publishers uh, up to getting them to the uh, to our subscribers, our customers, uh, is running in Python um, on AWS. So we're doing a cloud deployment, uh, and that's uh, the technology framework you're coming into. Uh, we're doing asynchronous programming, so we're using Tornado uh, as our main uh, web and, and REST front end uh, platform. And uh, so we're, we're really doing cutting edge development on our side. Um, yeah. And uh, so that's the, the one backend part. So we're doing web, web development, and our, um, our backend part is, is um, uh, basically using the same, uh, same infrastructure, so also Tornado based. Uh, and apart from that, we're also doing, um, so we're working with our catalog. Um, once you have such a large catalog, uh, with so many books and so many users, um, uh, you start uh, facing the problem that, you know, you need to get the content to the users. Um, and large catalog becomes difficult to navigate and people can't be sure that they find the content they want. So what we're working on is um, <clears throat> enabling our users to find the right content for them, making it easy for them uh, to, to, you know, get the books that they read, uh, that they want to read, um, finding the content they like, uh, having recommendations, having uh, automated um, ways to, to bring the content to our users and make them happy. And that's basically the thing that uh, motivates us, so making our readers happy. Uh, and we see that every day that they are, because um, we're talking to them directly, we have them on the phone, uh, so they call off problems, we can just tell them, okay, and this is how it works. And they are just, you know, they go, I'm so happy you're there, because, um, uh, this is the best service I, I was using in the last couple of years, and uh, so that's the feedback we, can, we, we currently get, and so we're very happy that um, we, can, we can keep that up and, you know, keep you making our users happy. Um, and that's what we're working on every day. Um, so uh, if you're interested in, in job offers, uh, we're, that's, that's us. We're actually a pretty small company. We're just about 15 people. Um, and, well, being a market leader at 15 people is, it's tough, but it's, it's very motivating and um, we are constantly, we're, we're growing. We're looking for you to uh, help us uh, keep up our, our vision of making, our, making readers happy, making, um, getting, getting people uh, read the books they like, find the books they like. Uh, so we're looking for, for web developers, backend developers, um, Python developers in general, uh, but 
definitely good developers, so people who, who know what they're doing and uh, who, who help us achieve our goals. Okay? Uh, so here's a little, uh, this is our app. Uh, you can read, us, uh, read Scooby on Android devices and iOS devices. Uh, so the app is a native app, and it feels really nice. You can just download it from the, um, uh, from the Google Play Store or the um, uh, um, Apple App Store. Uh, we're also available for, uh, for Kindle Fire devices. Uh, so just give it a try. Uh, see what we've achieved so far. Uh, have fun reading a bit. And uh, then, yeah, come and meet me. Um, I'll be around for the next uh, couple of days on the conference. And uh, yeah, you can you know, see my t-shirt. Uh, so whenever you see someone from Scooby, just talk to them, uh, get in touch with us. Uh, we have to, to hear from you. Thanks. Hi everybody, I'm Philip. I work for Blue Yonder. Blue Yonder is a predictive analytics company. And what we basically do is we build predictive applications to fully automate business decision making for our clients in various markets, such as retail, travel, transport, industry, logistics, and so on. And um, our apps are heavily relying on Python. Our complete stack is in Python. And we use some of these technologies you see listed here. And uh, of course, our applications incorporate lots of data science know-how because they're mainly based on machine learning algorithms. And um, currently, Blue Yonder has around 150 people. Right now, we are really fortunate um, to be growing really mm -hmm. fast. And uh, this is why we actually search for clever people who are experienced in software development, as well as uh, data scientists. We really like open source software. Python, as already mentioned, we really like clean coding, DevOps, continuous delivery, and so on. Currently, we have three office locations. Our headquarters are in Thousand, Germany, and we have an office in Hamburg, and one in London. Most of us are actually writing code every day, which is quite nice, so um, not so much management at Blue Yonder. Um, if you would like to know any more details about Blue Yonder, visit our booth. We are here all week, and yeah, that's it. Thanks. I've only got one slide. Hi, I'm Alice. I'm from Cluster HQ. Um, we're a company that is based in the UK, in Bristol, which is a really great city if anyone's been there. Um, we're also based in San Francisco in the US, um, and we're looking for people also who would like to work remotely. 
Um, oh, I think you may not be able to hear you at the back. Oh, sorry. I'll start again. I'm Alice from Cluster HQ. Um, we're a company that's based in Bristol in the UK, San Francisco in the US, and uh, we also have some remote workers. Um, we're a startup with Silicon Valley, stun um, Villa Silicon Valley funding. Um, we started in Bristol about five or six years ago, and we've recently um, pivoted to have a product that works alongside Docker to manage the data um, that in containers. So the positions that we're recruiting for are engineers who can write Python at all abilities, um, developer evangelist, and infrastructure engineer. So our booth is near to the entrance when you come down the stairs. Um, we've got more information about the different jobs and things there. So I think we've probably seen some of you. Um, we also have t-shirts coming, again, stuck in customs at the moment. So hopefully by, before you all go home, we'll be able to give them out to you. Um, I'm just going to hand over to Richard, who's going to talk a little bit about our product, Flocker, which is an open sourced product. Um, thanks, Alice. Um, so I'm Richard. I'm a senior engineer at uh, Cluster HQ. Um, what should I say? Um, our slogan is container data management. And what that means is that um, we're developing an open source product called Flocker, uh, which is designed to uh, help you move your stateful Docker containers from server to server. Um, and we do that using technology like uh, ZFS. Um, and we, used, uh, we, use, we have a, a different uh, system which uses Cinder and OpenStack. And we have a, a third back end which uses Amazon and EBS uh, block devices. Um, I've been involved, to tell you a bit about what I've been doing recently at um, Cluster HQ, um, I've been working on the uh, OpenStack um, Cinder driver for, for Flocker. And um, it's, been, it's been an interesting learning experience for me. Um, it, it works by attaching, creating and attaching um, EBS block devices to a virtual machine, um, creating a file system on the block device, um, mounting that uh, file system, and that file system then becomes associated with the container whose data you want to save and, and make portable. Um, and when you make a call to our REST API, um, Flocker will um, detach the, uh, the file system, oh, sorry, it'll stop the container, detach the file system, uh, uh, unmount the file system, I should say, detach the block device, and then reattach it to the new server before starting up the container on, on, on that new server. Um, what else can I say? Um, it's, uh, it's a great place to work. I've been uh, there in Bristol for one and a half years so far, and um, I'm working with some of my... I, I don't know how many of you have sort of programming heroes and mentors, but I've, I'm really excited to be working with the Twisted developers, uh, Jean-Paul Calderoni, um, Itamar Turing, and uh, Jonathan Lang. All three of them were kind of there at the very start of the Twisted project. Um, and they're really smart people to work with. But I, I work with a whole bunch of smart people, uh, and we're distributed all over the world. And that's, uh, that's the other interesting part of the job for me, is the uh, amount of traveling and, uh, and the conferences I've been to and the, uh, the interesting people I've met since uh, joining the company. So um, I would recommend joining, coming and seeing us at our booth and, uh, and find out a bit more about the software and uh, the roles that we've, uh, we, we, we've got on offer. I think, um, Adam, you're going to tell us a bit about... Just a bit more about how we write the software. Yeah. So um, we almost exclusively use Python, and as Richard mentioned, Twisted. Um, and we really focus on making high-quality code. So that's the main thing, or one of the main things we're looking for in a developer is not necessarily someone who has experience with ZFS, OpenStack, Docker, Twisted, although those would be nice. Um, but we know that we're quite limited with that, so we're looking for people who really like writing high-quality code. So we do things like test-driven development. Everything goes through code review, um, lots of CI kind of things. Um, and we really have a culture of knowledge sharing. So like Richard has some of his programming heroes, me too, um, there. And I've learned a lot working there, and I really, really recommend it for that. Um, and one of the cool things is that um, like someone mentioned, right, uh, you mentioned about Red Hat, also like us, all our stuff is open source. Um, and 
we also give back quite a lot to the open source projects that we depend on and like we're kind of allowed to do that and contribute back and give back to the community when we want to. Well, yeah. two, two of them are Elliot and Machinist, are two examples. Yep, of so we've got our own side projects, which aren't Flocker, um, and also just if we find bugs or one features in other, other Python libraries, it's pretty nice that we can spend some of our time working on that. Great. Come and find us on the stand and talk to us. Uh, we're here till Friday. Okay, thank you very much.